I've always wondered, can you cram two humpback whales into a Klingon bird of prey? Going off how it looks in Star Trek IV The Voyage Home, this captured bird of prey just isn't a very big ship and humpback whales are very big animals. Could they actually fit into the ship as depicted? When the Klingon Bird of Prey first appeared in Star Trek III, it was a pretty big vessel. This is most clearly depicted at the end of the film, where we can see the scale of this ship next to people. Matching up Chris Kuhn's excellent Bird of Prey model with the shot, and comparing its length to the height of the people in the shot, we can see that this ship is somewhere between 145 and 150 meters quite a bit larger than its alleged intended length of 110 meters. Now, that's not huge compared to something like the Enterprise, but we are talking about a ship that's as long as a modern-day destroyer, but crewed by only 12 people, evidently. However, this exact same vessel would appear smaller in the next film, significantly smaller. By my estimates, using the same comparison methods, it's about 56 meters in this particular shot. Granted, there are some anomalies in this matte painting that don't quite agree with the miniature, and so that might make guessing the scale a little bit difficult, but the fact remains, just by looking at the people around the ship, it's clearly a lot smaller than it appeared in the last film. The scale of these Bird of Prey vessels would go on to fluctuate wildly in virtually every other appearance, spawning multiple different classes of ship all using the exact same miniature in what is perhaps one of the most confusing scaling issues in all of Star Trek. But the size of the ship is of particular concern in Star Trek IV, because we have to fit two whales inside, and we pretty extensively see the cargo bay. In fact, we see it enough that it's fairly easy to model a rough approximation of this Set. And what's really interesting is that if we assume that we've underestimated the length of the ship, you know, between the matte painting and 80s visual effects compositing, and it's really more like 60 meters long, then in that case, if we place this set, which is roughly 12 by 20 meters, we actually find that the main hull segment of the Bird of Prey is about 12 meters wide. And if we put the back wall of the bay up against the impulse engine, then this lower section of the hull is almost exactly 20 meters long. So it looks like the set was actually perfectly designed to fit into this particular part of the ship at 60 meters long. The problem with that is that this part of the ship is curved in the front and doesn't actually contain the corners of the set. It appears to fit from both the front and from the side, but in 3D space, it just doesn't work. Now, this isn't an insurmountable issue, like you could relatively easily redesign the set with minimal changes and it would fit. But as it appears on screen, the set just simply doesn't fit into a 60 meter ship, much less the 56 meter ship implied earlier in the film. But this isn't a huge deal because there's actually another human scale reference shot that we can use. And that's when our heroes are sinking into San Francisco Bay. Here we can see the heroes standing on the sinking vessel. And if we angle match this again and use those comparison methods as before, we can see that these shots suggest something like 74 meters. Obviously, there are some inconsistencies. For instance, this set is missing that iconic underbite that the Bird of Prey has. I guess that broke off in the crash or something, but everything else pretty well works with the scale, which means that we could be working with a 74 meter ship here, and the cargo bay easily fits inside. It actually easily fits under this lip here, which is a really good deck division from a visual standpoint, so that's pretty cool. But while we're discussing the size of the ship, whatever happened to that 150 meter scaling from earlier? That would completely solve our problems, right? Is there any evidence in this film for a 150 meter bird of prey? Well, there is indeed. When the HMS Bounty decloaks in front of a whaling vessel, we get another really good opportunity to see just how large this ship is. And that's easy because the size of this whaling vessel is easy to nail down. That's because it started its life as the USS YMS-322, a World War II era minesweeper converted into the fishing vessel known as Golden Gate. And it's in this configuration that it was used in the film. And this variety of ship was about 42 meters long. So if we stage this scene in 3D, we can fairly accurately pin the bird of prey to a length of 150 meters. Of course, this completely defies all of our other fairly definitive small bird of prey evidence. And ultimately, between Star Trek 3 and 4, there are only two instances of the ship appearing this large, and plenty of the ship appearing small. So I'm completely willing to say that the huge size here 
is simply a mistake, and the ship should look a little more like this. And it's not like we lose our dramatic shot either, we just have to reframe things for a similar epic impact. So ultimately, we have a ship that's bouncing between 56 and 74 meters. But remember, the cargo bay can't even fit in a ship that's 60 meters. So I would suggest splitting the difference right down the middle and say that the ship is at minimum 65 meters. At 65 meters, conveniently, the cargo bay just barely fits. So that works, and it doesn't too radically defy either of the human scale shots in the film either. So now that we've finally got all of that out of the way, we find ourselves asking the important question, do the whales fit? And despite all of our talk about the size of the vessel, the problem was never really the size of the ship itself. It's the size of the cargo bay. In the film, we see that both whales fit in one side of the cargo bay, and they just don't both fit in there. There's just barely enough room for one whale in there let alone two. What's really interesting about this set is that the whales actually fit really comfortably if they're split into two separate halves of the cargo bay. They fit so well, in fact, that I'm inclined to believe that the set was actually originally designed to contain the whales this way, and they were only moved to one side of the cargo bay so that they could be depicted simultaneously in the same shot. Now, keep in mind that's just pure speculation. So we'll accept that two whales are indeed in one side of the bay, but we have to disregard any shots that show us just how big this half of the bay really is. Basically, we need to extend this side of the bay some 5 meters, and just accept that it won't closely match the dimensions of the set as depicted in the film. Now, what's great about this is that we really don't have to change the overall size of the set to accomplish this. We really just need to move that central corridor more off to the port side of the ship. And who's to say that this corridor can't slide back and forth to begin with? It could have just happened off screen, and it doesn't really contradict any other visual evidence anyway. And the best part about this choice is that it doesn't expand the ship at all. We can still get that nice, compact 65 meter minimum ship. But whether we're talking about the exterior size or the interior configuration, the Bird of Prey is just an absolute mess when it comes to consistency. It's probably impossible to truly harmonize every single bit of evidence simultaneously. But in Star Trek IV, there is clearly a bit more thought behind the scaling than it would initially seem. There's obviously a margin of error on either side, but the set does fit in the ship, and the whales can fit in the set with some creative license. Anyway, that's just a fun little question that I've been researching for a while, and I wanted to share the results with you all. Figuring out stuff like this is super fun, and I hope that you guys enjoy watching these sorts of videos, because I definitely enjoy making them. And if you guys want to help ensure that I can continue making these videos and continue to have the freedom to basically pursue any topic that I want to pursue, head on over to Patreon and support me there. Basically, any amount makes a massive difference. To the rest of you, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.